Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Melissa. Thanks for clicking on this video. This is a little bit of a different type of video. I've never filmed something like this before or talked about anything like this on my channel. Just a disclaimer, if you are against plastic surgery, don't believe in getting surgery to enhance your appearance or to correct maybe uh, an imperfection that you personally perceive and see in yourself, then just don't even watch this video because this video is going to be about plastic surgery. Specifically, it's going to be about what to pack for a Brazilian butt lift or BBL surgery. I haven't said this anywhere. I haven't mentioned it on my Instagram. I haven't talked about it anywhere, but I, in a couple weeks, will be traveling to Miami to have lipo 360 and a BBL. So that's basically where they liposuction your stomach, your back, your flanks, and put it all in your booty. So anyways, I'll make a separate video about that on why I decided to have it done, who I went to, my experience. I can vlog all that if you guys are interested. Just let me know down in the comments. So before I get started, go ahead and like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a video when I post it. Um, so really quick, any of you that know me know that I am OCD when it comes to preparing for anything. I have to write a list. I have to make sure I go down my list and check everything off. I have to do my research. I wanna make sure, especially traveling to the other side of the country for surgery, I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna forget anything or not need anything. I don't know why I think leaving, leaving the state means I'm going to a third world country where they don't have anything. They have, they have stores, I can get whatever I need while I'm there, but I'd rather be in control of what I'm spending, buy it now, have it ready to go so that there aren't any unforeseen expenses, even though I'm sure there will be, um, while I'm there. So everything that I have packed, everything I've put on my list for supplies, I've researched, I've watched different dolls videos. I kind of decided what would and wouldn't work for me. So I just got what I thought I would use. I'm going to film an update or a part two to this video after I have the procedure done and I'm back home. Going through the supplies and letting you know what I used, what I didn't use, what was a good investment, what was a complete waste of money. So let's get started have my suitcase here and I am our, you know, cause I'm OCD. So I clearly am obviously packed two weeks ahead of time. I'm going to go through the suitcase and let you know everything that I got, what it's for, why I chose to get that. And I will also list everything down in the description box with links. So if you are going to be having this procedure and want to get one of the supplies that I mentioned, cause you think it might help you, you can click on the link. It'll take you directly there. I also, have a link down in the description box for a printable supply list, a BBL supply list of everything that um, I feel is beneficial or I feel that I would be using after my procedure. So if you like lists, you like to check things off the list and stay organized, go ahead and click that link down in the description box and print out your supply list and you can head on over to Amazon and get all of the stuff that you need. Okay, okay so let's get so started. I bought two packages of foams. There are three foams in each of these packages. And so what you do with these, before you put your faja on or your compression garment, you put them on the sides and the front of your stomach, your abdomen. And this helps not only give you more compression, but also prevent any lines or seams from your clothing or from your garment, if there are any, um, from leaving indentions in your skin because you're literally gonna be shrinking and compressing your body the entire time. So these really help. The reason I bought two packages is because looking at some of the um, videos that I have seen online from some of the dolls that had this procedure done, I'm gonna, I know that I'm gonna be leaking a lot of fluid. So if these get gross, they're pretty inexpensive. I'm not gonna try to wash them. I'm just gonna toss them out and then I have a backup. So that's, I bought two of these. And everything is linked down in the, in the description box if you're interested. Most of the stuff I got um, on Amazon or I already had it. And um, if it's something I already had, I will let you know that and I'll try to find something comparable and put it down in the description box if you're interested in getting it. I also got 
Chuck's pads. Um, I know some women get um, puppy pads. So you use this to line your bed um, for afterwards when you're leaking that fluid. You can use it to line the backseat of the, um, the vehicle that you're traveling in, line your seat, whatever. This is just an absorbent pad to soak up any um, fluid that may be leaking out. So I got a big pack of that. I just packed some extra sheets because we're gonna be staying in an Airbnb and I don't want to, um, of course, I don't wanna damage their, their mattress, their linens, their blankets, their pillows, whatever, because I'm not trying to pay any more money than what I've already spent on all this. Trust me, it's, one thing I did not, let me just say this, one thing I did not know going in to have my first plastic surgery procedure is that plastic surgery ain't no broke bitch game, okay? It's not just you pay for the surgery and you're done. No, you have expenses. You have upkeep, you have post-op expenses. So I just brought some extra sheets from home. Um, while we're on the topic of protecting the bed and protecting the surface, I did go to Dollar Tree <clears throat> and pick up, I don't know why I need four because you know, I'm so obsessed with going without, with not having what I need, with, it's just, you don't need four, trust me. You could probably get one. One would probably be enough. The shower curtain is used to lay across the bed um, and then you lay your puppy pads or your chuck pads on top of that and that helps protect the mattress. I got four, I don't know. Apparently I feel like I'm gonna be draining like Niagara Falls, but if I am, I'm prepared. Oh, we're still on the topic of the bed. Let me see if I can find it here. I did, is this it? That's not it. Where is it? Oh, here they are. So I got these on Amazon also. Um, I know that I'm gonna be sleeping on my stomach, but I like to like cuddle my pillow when I sleep and I'm worried about any fluid on the pillows that belong to the Airbnb. So I ordered two of these plastic zipper pillow protectors, pillowcase protectors. It's like a, it's like a heavy um, sheeting material. So this came in a pack of two. So I got two of those. <clears throat> and then of course I brought my own, my own pillowcases from home. So there's that. Okay, I got a boppy pillow. So the boppy pillow is to be used when you are sitting on your BBL pillow to support your back. Now I did buy, I did buy a BBL pillow that comes with like an attachable back lumbar support, which is kind of like a mini version of the boppy pillow, but I tried sitting in a chair with it just to see how it, how much support it would give me in my back. It does nothing. It it didn't help. So I actually whoop, I got this pillow. Well, my mom picked it up for me. She got it at Ross, and it was um, fifteen dollars. And of course the because I I have to be extra. I got this cover off Amazon. Because it's darker, it's not gonna show fluids that much. This is what the original cover looks like. So that would definitely be stained and looked pretty nasty. So I got this cover. Plus it'd be easy just to slip this off, throw it in the wash. So this kind of goes on your back. Like, I don't know if you can see that. Like so, when you're sitting on your pillow. So that's why well, I got that. The BBL pillow, like I mentioned, I bought that off of Amazon. I packed a, a fuzzy warm blanket. I don't know. What if I need it and I don't have it? Then my world is gonna end, so I packed it. This is the BBL pillow that I purchased online. Uh, ultra comfort, it's like a memory gel foam, I guess, but it's pretty firm, so this, goes with that, goes with this boppy nursing pillow. I've seen that a lot of women get their BBL pillow from their surgeon's office, and I'm pretty sure my surgeon's office offers it also, but 
remember, I'm a freaking nut job and I have to make sure I have everything beforehand. So I just went ahead and bought this. You can wait, you know. I'm sure um, a lot of surgeon offices have like a, like a whole, um, I don't know what it's called, a party pack with your pillow and your, all, you know, all the other junk that you're gonna need. So that's what I got there. Now this I did not buy off Amazon. I don't know where I got this. I've had this for a while. It's, um, most of you know I'm a registered nurse and I know that um, having, a big, having a procedure like a BBL where, where you are having a lot of bodily fluids removed and plus just the stress and trauma of having a surgery can cause your blood pressure to go low. And it's actually one of the most common um, complaints or like complications after the BBL is um, being dizzy, lightheaded when you stand up. And that's because your blood pressure is low, you need to increase your fluids. I just want to make sure that my blood pressure is on point. So if I am, obviously I am not saying get a blood pressure cuff and this is gonna substitute contacting your doctor if you have an emergency. I'm just saying for myself, if I'm feeling dizzy, if I'm feeling lightheaded, I can slap on my blood pressure cuff, to check my blood pressure. Oh, snap, my blood pressure's low. Let me do what I need to do to bring my blood pressure up. So this isn't really a necessity. This is again, just a, just an anal retentive request for myself. So um, prescription wise, your at least my surgeon will prescribe um, whatever medications I'm to take before and after the procedure at my pre-op appointment. One thing that um, he is having me take now is um, iron. So I gotta start taking iron. I, I brought that with me. I bought Arnica tablets. Now I don't know, I've never used Arnica before. I know that it's a natural anti-inflammatory, helps with bruising, swelling, that sort of thing. I've never used it personally, but a lot of dolls have said that they use Arnica. Arnica tea, Arnica gel, Arnica tablets. So I do have the Arnica gel. That's, I'll talk about that later. But I did get Arnica tablets and this says you take um, two tablets, repeat every four to six hours as needed. So I mean, why not try it? I'm gonna be swollen anyways. There's, there's nothing that you can do after having any type of surgery to completely 100% prevent the swelling. You're gonna swell. So I'm going to, I'm gonna do everything I can to minimize that swelling. So I got that. Tylenol PM. Um, it's very important that you don't take an NSAID or a, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory like ibuprofen, Aleve, that sort of thing after surgery because that can increase bleeding. Um, Tylenol or acetaminophen is safe to take. I decided to bring regular Tylenol as well, but also Tylenol PM because I may have trouble falling asleep at night. Maybe I can't get comfortable. So I thought, why not? Because if I need it and I don't have it, I'm going to freak out. So I bought that. I did bring, I did buy some gold bond body powder. I haven't heard anyone talk about this or mention this, but I have heard many times um, dolls talking about how much it itches when they're in their faha or their compression garment. And I thought to myself, well, what is causing the itching? Obviously it's the skin that's reattaching to the tissues and whatnot from the liposuction, the nerves coming back alive, but also probably the lack of oxygen or the lack of air that's getting to your skin because you're constantly like wearing that faha, wearing your foams and all that stuff, and also moisture. So I figured, why not try this? It says cooling action, triple action relief, cooling, absorbing, itch relieving. So I'm gonna avoid my incision sites. I'm not gonna put the powder directly, but maybe sprinkling a little bit on my hand and rubbing it like on the um, inside of the faha before I put it on, that might help. I don't know. Figured I would try it. So that's why I bought this. I did get a gel eye mask. I know that after surgeries that I've had in the past, like having my gallbladder removed, um, I woke up and I get really, really swollen after surgery. I've seen this happen to a lot of dolls and I just figure, you know, it would be nice to have a nice cold ice pack to just rest on my eyes while I'm recovering from my procedure. And I figured it's important to get one that has the strap on it because if not, it's just gonna lay on my face and I can't lay on my back so it's gonna fall off when I lay on my stomach. So I figured if it's strapped to my head, it's not gonna go anywhere. 
I'm telling you, half of the stuff you do not need, but these are things that I feel I need. I have to have them all. Okay. Oh, see, I was talking about the Arnica pills. I also got the Arnica tea. Um, this actually comes in a, when I ordered it off of Amazon, it came in a big package, like two boxes, two or three boxes of tea. I know I'm not gonna have to bring all of them, so I just figured I'd bring, I don't know, what is this, 20 of them? 20, we'll be in Miami for 12 days, so that should, that should be fine. I know that, oh, let me start with this. So I've seen the Go Girl urinal. I've seen that that really helps, having a urinal really helps when you're trying to pee with, um, out of that little hole in your faja. But a lot, I've, I can't remember who it was that mentioned this. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can find that video and I'll link it down below. But she, this, um, this girl did a really good video on what she was packing and she also like tested everything out before she decided whether or not she was gonna bring it along on her trip. And she mentioned that she tried, you know, that pink go girl. It kind of looks like it's a pink go girl um, female urinal. And everyone was saying, oh, it's so great. It's so great. And she was the only one who actually tried it out while she was wearing her faja and said, it's not narrow enough to use to urinate while you're wearing your faja to prevent peeing on yourself. So she actually got this one and it's called Tinkle Bell. So it looks like this this little spout, and you can see like, see how narrow that is? That would just fit right between those thighs and you just urinate right out. Now I haven't tried this. Wait, did I try it? No. <laughs> I have not tried this yet, but she tried it in the video and she said it works great. It even has this little, it's called like, I don't know, it's a cooter squeegee. So when you remove it from between your legs, it kind of, kind of wipes across your hoo-ha and makes it nice and nice and dry. So there's that. And it comes with a little, a little like waterproof pouch that you can put it in. So there's that. Now, when I, when I was researching um, the female urinals, I, I started to think back to when I had, when I had my babies and when you would get that little peri bottle to kind of to squeeze and kind of clean your area down there after you go to the bathroom. I thought it would probably be a good idea to have something like that. So I bought this, it's called Soothe Hers. I bought this on Amazon as well. And it is a, it's a peri bottle, peri bottle. So it opens up like this, put your water in there. And it has a little, um, valve on the bottom, a little air port here. So you can fill it up with water and turn it upside down. The air, port, the air um, valve here is gonna keep the water from pouring out. And it has a little, I don't know if you can see that, it has a little, little holes there. And the best part is, that's right, it's a telescoping coochie washer. So you just, after you go to the bathroom, you just take this and rinse off. It has a nice little waterproof storage bag. Of course, everyone says you need to bring baby wipes. These are the flushable wipes. They're not as thick as regular baby wipes. I think I'm probably going to pick up a package of baby wipes when I'm in Miami. Um, I got this at Walmart. Obviously they do sell it on Amazon, so I can link it below for you. But I figured, you know, I know a lot of people think, you know, you're not supposed to flush regular wipes down the toilet. And when you're staying like in a hotel or an Airbnb, people are like, it ain't my house. I don't care about the, I don't care about their plumbing. Well, I really don't care about their plumbing either, but this is what I already had. So I'm gonna go get the thicker wipes also, because I think those, work better and they say like your booty is really like tight and rock hard. It's hard to kind of wipe and you have to like floss it in there. If I try to floss with this, it's gonna be a disaster. So I need the Huggies baby wipes. So I'm gonna get some of those. I just realized I had this whole thing organized and packed ready to go and I literally am just destroying it. So I'm gonna have to reorganize everything. They say if you wear a seamless 
tank or a seamless top underneath your faja. It helps protect your skin, helps prevent from getting faja burns. So I ordered these seamless tanks off of Amazon. They're really not like they're really nice quality. They almost they're very stretchy. Um, they almost feel like a compression garment themselves. So it is the brand Apartment Nine. Can you see that? Apartment Nine Essentials. There we go. And I'm going to these little tags can just pull right out. But they come in packs of two. So I got a, a two pack black and a two pack nude. Ah. So I should be set with those. Everyone mentions that they don't like those ugly white compression socks that the hospital gives you, blah, blah, blah. Personally, I agree. <laughs> I don't like them either. But if you think about after your surgery and you have those put on, you're gonna go home, you're gonna go to your recovery house, wherever you're staying afterwards, and you are going to leak. You're going to bleed, it's gonna drip down your legs, it's gonna get all over those nasty white stockings. Perfect, because those stockings are ugly, so when you go to your appointment, your post-op appointment the next day, and you, you can remove those and throw those ugly ones out, and then you have your fresh ones. I haven't opened them, but I did get these online. It's not like a one-size-fits-all. There's like a, you just get a measuring tape, measure your leg, and then follow the little chart, and you can order the one that fits you. I really should open this and try them on, but I don't know, I feel... Is it weird that I feel like if I open this, then it's not new and it's somehow less of, less effective? I don't know what my problem is, but I just don't want to open it until I'm going to use them. That's what I'm saying. All right, so now this is the, um, I don't know what the actual word is, the your abdomen board, your stomach board. Um, this is the ab board that you put on under your faja that helps you it helps compression it helps keep your stomach flat and prevent you also from um kind of when you sit you bend over and you get that crease in your belly well any creases that are happening underneath your faja after surgery that skin is trying to mold itself back to your body if it has a crease it's going to mold it and you're going to have that crease so please board make me creaseless got this on amazon um, the other board that I got is the back board. This is a lumbar molder post-surgical garment after surgery. So this is a little back board that goes, it has like a little crease. I don't know if you can, can you see that little like divot there? It's kind of like a little dorsal fin. So that goes back in your, back here in your faja. I don't know how some of you dolls who've had this surgery look so like flawless when you guys are in your fajas with your foams and your boards and your seamless tanks and then the faja and then your wrap and your waist trainer and still look like super snatch I don't know I feel like I'm gonna put all these on I'm gonna look like a sumo wrestler but as long as I don't get no creases okay so this is immediately going on the list of what you do not need you, I mean, you, it's not an urgent item. It's not a necessity. This is merely for comfort. This is merely because I must have everything that I feel like I may possibly need while I'm there. Uh, my husband's going with me. We are flying into Miami, getting a rental car, and he'll be driving me back and forth to my appointments. And I know that I'm not going to be able to sit on my butt. I'm going to be lying in the back seat. I'm no skinny mini. I'm not going to be able to fit on that little narrow back seat. I need surface. I need room to spread out. I know I could just rent an SUV or whatever, but I'm not trying to spend any more money. Okay, that's really funny. I'm saying I'm trying not to spend any more money, but I'm over here telling you about all the shit that I bought that I don't need. Okay, anyways, moving along. So this here, I'm not going to open it all the way up, but this is a blow up mattress that fits in the back seat of a car. So it is kind of, it's kind of shaped like this, like an L. This bottom portion here that's inflated sits on the floor of the back seat. So it makes the whole back seat a level surface, like a whole, a whole bed for you to lay on. This was pretty inexpensive. I think it was like 20, 
$20, $25 on Amazon. But it comes, obviously, with the mattress. It comes with some little patches in case you spring a leak. And it has it comes with this carrying bag and also a little plug-in, um, what is this called? Inflator, a pump for your, plug it into the cigarette lighter or the, you know, the little doodad in the car and it will, it will bump it up. I know some of you are way too young to know that reference, but some of you may not be. Comment below if you know who said that. So I know on the day of surgery, you're supposed to wear um, something that opens in the front, something that's loose, that's comfortable. Originally, what I did was I went to Walmart and I bought, I bought these two, I've actually seen this exact nightgown on so many dolls after their procedure. So I bought, they're like the long t-shirt gowns, inexpensive, like five, six dollars, something like that. So I bought two of those. And then I started thinking, I'm gonna wear these and they're gonna get so full of blood and fluid, they're gonna be disgusting. Of course I can wash them, but when am I ever really gonna wear these again? I was really looking for something that opened in the front. I brought a robe, um, but what I did was I went to Goodwill on, I don't know what day it is, Monday or Wednesday when they have, when everything is half price. And I bought me some grandma dresses that zip in the front look at this isn't she a beaut perfect it's loose it zips in the front i can literally just wear this the day of surgery and not have to worry about messing up any of my pjs or shirts that i would wear again and the best thing is this was regularly $3, so I bought it on half price day and got it for $1.50. If this thing gets so gross and disgusting, I can literally toss it in the trash and it only cost me a dollar. So that's what I did. Went to Goodwill and I bought this. I did buy a couple um, pullover ones, a couple pullover ones from, from uh, Goodwill. Also, this one was 50 cents. This one was 50 cents. So all of these, if they get ruined, then I'm really not out any money. Um, I did I did have some Kohl's cash that I needed to use. I had like $20 in Kohl's cash and this was $24. And I don't know, I didn't really need it yet again. Throw that in the list of stuff I don't need. But I, so I ended up getting this for $4. It's another little zip up grandma dress grandma robe I don't know what do you guys call them moo's zip up robes um, and I did bring so I did bring one outfit we are gonna be there my husband and I will be there for 12 days and I figured by like the 10th day 10th day I should have the drains out. I know that my surgeon does use drains. I'm sure he'll want to go walk around or he'll want to go somewhere. So I just decided I would buy or bring along a, this is just a basic black long dress. So it'll still hide everything that's going on underneath with the faha and the boards and the foams and all that. And I brought a kimono, is that, what, is that what they're called? Kimono to go over it, to help, to help hide all the sexiness that's gonna be going on after the surgery. Um, both of these I got on Amazon as well. And you know, honestly, Amazon, the brand, um, Amazon Essentials, they have some, the stuff's pretty good quality. I buy a bunch of, um, a bunch of like tanks, uh, fitted tees, long sleeve tees, these dresses, like they are so comfortable and stretchy. They wash really good. I've already worn this once and it washes really well. It doesn't fade They're and it's super inexpensive. So I got that. There are a couple of other things that I do need to get that I have not gotten yet. And of course I have my list on my phone of things that I need to get. So I do need to get the poisey pads. Poisey? Poise? <laughs> poise pads. Um, those are the female incontinent 
maxi pads. I know some girls use them for extra compression. I've seen like the girls that whose surgeons don't use drains, they really leak a lot and so those really help absorb. They're super absorbent. I've seen some videos where um, dolls are packing these really thin, itty bitty absorbent um, panty liners with wings and all. That is not gonna do anything. When you are leaking, when that fluid's coming out, that's gonna be like a and it's gonna be full. You need the big girl, mama, front to back, it's a pillow, maxi pad. That's what you need. I also need to get some adult diapers um, to wear over the faha, helps, um, you know, prevent any leakages and whatnot. I really don't know exactly why dolls are wearing the adult diapers because obviously you're not gonna wear them to urinate in, but you're going to wear them, I guess, to help any fluid that's draining is gonna help, that's gonna help soak it up. So, I don't know, I've seen girls have them, so I want them too, so I'm gonna buy those. The poise pads and the diapers, I'm probably just gonna buy those when I'm in Miami because clearly I don't have enough room. Um, I also am going to get a, I've been looking at um, the dollar stores for the spray bottle of peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, to help get the blood stains out of the Faja when I change. I am buying a second um, stage one Faja from my surgeon's office so that when I follow up with him, my first day post-op and they take your garment off, they can put me into a nice, fresh, clean one and then I can take my nasty soiled one back to the Airbnb, spray it with the hydrogen peroxide, wash it, and well, I'm saying I can do all this, but really I'm not gonna be doing it. My husband's gonna be doing this. He doesn't know that. He's gonna be doing the washing for once. Out of 24 years, he's gonna wash them. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as things that I am, um, things that I feel I need to take with me to Miami. Um, there are a couple things that I that I already had at home that I feel are going to be beneficial for after surgery. I have Arnica gel. Mainly I think um, this is being used for bruising. I know that sometimes post-op lymphatic massages are done with the Arnica gel. Um, I kind of feel like this is more for afterwards because you're not, I mean, you're gonna be bruised, you're gonna be swollen. I guess it doesn't hurt, I could bring it with me. I don't know, I just kind of feel like I'm already taking the pills, I'm already drinking the tea. This can wait until I get home to help with any of the other bruising that um, is having a hard time fading. I have this massage roller. This would be good to do my own massages eventually down the road. I also have a fascia blaster that has these little like nubbies on it. And I think if I were to end up getting any fibrosis, this might really help break it up. Obviously, I'm not going to use any of these things until um, I talk to my surgeon to make sure that it's safe to do so after surgery, but I just wanted to have something in my arsenal at home that I could use. So that is pretty much it. That things that I've purchased for my upcoming BBL procedure. Like I said, I'll list everything down in the description box as well as a grand total of what I've spent on post-op supplies. So you can get an idea of estimate of how much extra you would have to budget for your recovery. Um, another thing you want to keep in mind as far as expenses after surgery are going to be your um, post-op lymphatic massages if your surgeon re recommends it. My surgeon does recommend massages so I have already booked my massages. Um, they range anywhere between 95 to 125 as far as the ones that I've booked. They're between 95 and 100 and Someone's here, the beasts have been activated. Okay, somewhere between 95 and $125 per massage. They recommend, one gal I'm going to recommends booking five in a row. Um, so I mean, you can easily spend a grand on massages. So just keep that in mind. Let me know if you've had this procedure done and if there's supplies that you feel that were really necessary that I did not mention, please leave those in the comments so that I can go and buy them immediately. Um, and, or vice versa, if you feel I have things in here that are completely useless and I just wasted my money, let me know because I'm sure I did. I mean, I'm pretty sure I did. Let me know if you're interested in seeing part two to this video where I talk about what I actually used and what I didn't use because this is a whole entire learning experience. 
Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe, um, hit the notification bell, share this video, leave comments, like do all of the things. It really helps uh, support my channel, helps me to be able to um, film more frequently. Let me know if you want me to vlog my BBL surgery. I'm probably not going to vlog like the pre-op appointment because there's so many of them out there. It's just you're sitting in an office <clears throat> filling out paperwork, you change into the paper gown, the hat, the shoes, and then that's it. Um, I don't think my surgeon is going to allow filming or, or be able to film my actual procedure. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from the office manager on that, but I will vlog immediately after I'll have my husband record me coming out of surgery, um, vlog everything, the experience, all that goodness. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know down in the comments, smash the like button, um, and I would be more than happy to get that filmed. So thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye. A few moments later. Hey, it's me, I'm back. Forgot to mention one thing. If you're like me, you really love your fuzzy slippers, and I really thought about taking them with me and wearing them after surgery, but I did watch a video where a doll mentioned not to wear these fuzzy slippers because that fluid that's gonna be dripping down your leg is gonna go into all of that fuzziness and it's gonna ruin your slippers. So I just bought these rubber slippers to wear after surgery. So if I get blood or any type of liquid on them, I can just rinse them off and they'll be fine. This was one thing I wanted to mention um, because I thought that was really important because I wholeheartedly planned on wearing my comfy fuzzy slippers, but I don't wanna destroy them because you can't wash those. And I didn't want to ruin my favorite fuzzy slippers. So get some plastic, rubber, washable slides, flip-flops to wear after surgery. And then you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so that's all. I'm really going now this time, okay? See you later.